All right, I think we can probably get started now. Welcome, everyone. Thank you very much for joining. For those of you who don't know me, I am Coach Milton or Milton, whatever floats your boat, no issues there. And honestly, it's great to have you all here. So many different teams, so many different ideas and eyes on what we're about to see today. And today is indeed McLean 05 ECNL, a game they played a while back. And we're going to examine all that, examine a few of the moments of the game, a few of the things they did try to do and all of that and see what we can learn from it, what you guys see, and hopefully we can all grow a little bit more today as players, all right? So I'm going to share my screen, and we're gonna get right into it. Got another addition there. And don't hesitate to say something, raise your hand, send a message, or just speak right away when you have a question or a comment or anything whatsoever, okay? We're all interacting here together, so enjoy it, and uh, let's get to it, all right? Awesome. Okay. All right, there we go. So, let's start very simply. We're gonna go over a few moments. Some of you that were here last week, the first few slides are gonna look very familiar. That's all right. We still need to make sure we get those ideas and those moments down in our heads, okay? So the game was McLean versus Wilmington, UCNL. And we're going to start right off with one of the moments of the game is when you're expanding the field of play. The formation itself isn't important. It's about how wide and deep they are getting. Okay, they're going all the way to the touchline and say the ball is starting with the left center back there. They're getting as deep as possible. It's the, the idea of getting as wide and as deep as possible when you have the ball. That's what we mean by expanding the field of play. You can hear it many different ways. Get wide, get big, spread out, occupy as much space as possible. So many different ways of saying it. All right. So that's number one. And yes, this is being recorded and will be put on YouTube. Forgot to mention that. Thank you, Eleanor, reminding me. Now, this one right here is fixing to commit the opposition in one area to play in another. So simply put, the blue team has the ball. The right back has the ball. You can see right there. And the red team is focusing on him there and the right winger and the center forward and the center back. They're trying to prevent him from playing it up. All right. So by bringing them all here, the space is now open on the left. Yeah. Uh, they have options on the left. They just need to get the ball there. Okay. Now, that is fixing the opposition one way so you can play in another. The only reason you would do that is to then be able to hit him on the other side or to faint that you're going to hit him on the other side and come back to the right. Those are things that we might potentially see in the upcoming videos. Just two more. Okay. Playing forward collectively between opposition lines. Okay. Right here. We're going to focus on the first image. We have the blue player has the ball. And this one already here, top left. The receiving player is in the red player's shadow. She checks into the middle to receive the ball in the lane and is open. Second one here, they come out of the pressing shadow, or in this case, the covering shadow, and receive the ball in the space, play to the support player, and they can go forward. And lastly, same thing. They leave the cover shadow, come into the middle, into the space. That is on a more specific scale. This one is more global. Did you guys do this all the time? You might see the right back, this right center back doing it all the way to the striker. You might see the six getting it to the 10. It could be the goalie getting it to the six. It could be any player, honestly, just breaking lines. That is your goal to break lines because it gets you closer to the opposition goal, which is where we want to go. All right. And this is something I absolutely love. It's, it's incredibly vertical and it's incredibly difficult because most teams will try to stop it. So that's where expanding the field of play comes in because it makes it easier and so on and so forth. And lastly, before we get right down to the videos, switching the flanks, play a field, okay? So after committing the opposition like here, after bringing them all to one side, you can now play it out to switch to the opposite side. All right, that is the most traditional next step, the conventional next step. And it's very, very useful. It can often be the right winger if you're playing in the classic 4-4-2, 4-2-3-1, 4-3-3, doesn't matter. The right winger comes in and that'll leave maybe the right back to overlap and be open. Or it could just be the right winger staying wide. Or if you're playing in a 3-4-2-1 as our McLean girls did, that means that wide wing back midfielder, depending on how, how you see it, can be very much open because the defense was dragged all the way to the left okay so we are going to start off with uh, the McLean girls with the video and I think we might see a goal here so I hope you do enjoy all right first off we're going to look at the questions then we're going to watch the video 
and then we're going to come back to the questions and see if we can answer them together as a group. So the questions are, what principles led to the goal? When and where was width provided? And when did we break lines and how, individually or collectively? Okay, so gave you a bit of a hint to the first answer there. So we're going to start it here. I think there's a bit of noise, so I'm going to try to cancel that out. And nope. one more added in, and here we go. All right, we're going to watch that again. We're going to take it slower a little bit here, okay? So we can really see what is happening. It is from the kickoff. It is the very first moment of the game. So as you can see, it looked like Holland against Germany from about 30 years ago, where the opposition team didn't even touch the ball before uh, McLean scored. That's all Coach Clyde's doing there, as you can see, guys. Okay? <laughs> so starts in center circle. They bring it back. They spread the f – oh, I'm giving answers away. I'm sorry. Let's uh, watch that one more time and see if you guys can come up with the answers. Right. Try to take the sound off. <coughs> in, getting as wide as possible on both sides of the field. The middle center back dropping into space, give, making her angle wider and better. Left wing back coming all the way wide to the touchline. Look at this. Excellent. Defense is slow to react. Pass there. And there. Boom. All right. So uh, I know we have a lot of participants here, so um, don't hesitate if you, if you have something to say, all right? I'll, I'll give most of the answers, but for the first one, let's uh, let's give it a try. What exactly did we see? What what led to the goal? Any any? I know we have more than thirty people here, so we definitely have someone with the answer. So maybe pick someone randomly. Yes, Connor, would you like to tell us what did we see? Pulak, you like to give answers. Tell me something, Pulak. What did you see and when? Maybe Pulak's not here. All right. Well, I'll, get, I'll help you guys out with the answers here for this first one. All right. So based on what we already discussed and based on the next question, we already gave you an idea of what was allowed here. The team got as wide as possible. The, McLean is playing with three at the back and the three center backs got as wide as possible. When the right center back had the ball, what did the middle center back do? She dropped, creating a better angle for herself to receive the ball and giving herself time when she had the ball. So she got farther away from the density and gave, made it much easier for herself. The left center back, before the middle center back received the ball, was already preparing to receive it herself. She didn't wait for her teammate to get the ball and then make the run. That would have been too late. She was already going into position. So once her teammate got the ball, boom, her teammate didn't even make, need to make many touches to get her the ball. And the same thing with the left wing back, who's already traveling to the touch line to create that space. So they got wide, creating space that, that way. But their striker in the 210s also created length and depth by staying high. And then you see the striker come check in and receive the ball there. And boom, they started on in the middle to the right and gradually swung it to the left before moving up the field and bring it all the way back to the right for a cross and then a scuffle in the middle where they put down very, very well. So I want you guys to all watch that with everything we said there. Remember, when we're watching these videos, do not pay attention to the person who has the ball. Pay attention to everyone around her. 
pay attention to the movement they make and especially the timing of the movement, when they make that move. That is what is most important with this, okay? Here, watch it one more time. Broke a line there. Look at our center back chopping in. Left center back is already in position. Left wing back touch line and accelerates at the right time. Look, one checking in there. We didn't get to see the striker checking in, but she did. And then look at this. Brought him all the way to the left, leaving space open on the right. The team moves up with it. They get multiple girls in the box, which is very important when you want to finish. Excellent. Okay. That's it as well. That's one comment I will make as well. When you are getting the ball into the box, you need to have as many people in the box as possible while still keeping that balance. If you only have one up against three or four, that, that better be a fantastic striker if she's going to take on those three or four by herself. Okay. And even then. Now, we're going to, obviously, we're going to see things that possibly we could have done differently. And this is all about learning. So that's the goal here as well. We're going to see another possession by uh, McLean. It's going to take a little bit of a while to get to where we want to see, but we will get there. So just keep your eyes open. Question is, what is another decision the center back could have made when re she received the ball? A decision they actually made earlier on in the game. And then this time just decided not to. So McLean and Wilmington trying to get control of the ball, secure control of the ball, not accomplished yet. Miscontrolled, and then McLean has the ball, played calmly, she tried to get wide, and boom, we, here right now, what could we have done? Instead of sending it forward there, I'm gonna watch that one more time, from that angle there, all right. Ball is slightly miscontrolled, both teams fight for it. And the question is, when the center back, the last person touched the ball on the white team, when she receives it, what could she have done? Okay. Boom. She gets open very well. And we see the movement by both players. But the pass isn't made. So what could we have done? What could she have done in that situation? All she right. could have switched the ball. Could have switched the ball. Oh, very good. To whom? How? Um, to the other center back. Very good. Very good. Excellent. I don't know who said that, but very good job. I think it was Giovanni, maybe. I don't know. All right. Well done on that one. The option was there because the center back showed for it. Now, one other person could have shown for it as well. One other person, well, more than one, but one other person in particular that we don't always discuss. And even Coach Eleanor mentioned we need to just talk about them. Uh, the goalie. Last week. The goalie, absolutely. The goalie, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I sometimes tell my players, and you guys might remember this, do not take the goalie space, especially when I'm talking to center backs, whether it's in 11 v 11 or for those that have played futsal, it's the same principle. Do not take the goalie space because the, we can play with the goalie. Make it 11 v 10 instead of 10 v 10. In this case, center back didn't take the goalie space, but the goalie as well did not go out of her way to create more space. She could have. All right, we're going to watch it one more time. Also, watch how the left wing back gets wide. She received the ball maybe a little bit earlier than she would have liked. She wasn't at the touchline yet. But that's okay. It's part of the game. So right here, with the ball, and left wing back's getting wide. Midfielder could have held on to a little bit more. Left wing back wanted to go up for it. And boom, here, right there. She went back to where the density was. She went back to where the ball was coming from. And especially on the defensive end, when you're in your own defensive third, that's not what you want to do. So the goalie also should have moved more to her left, or from our viewpoint, her, our right, to create another angle for a pass. So we could have given it to the center back. She could have given it to the goalie. But in any case, we really could have been resetting there. We really could have reset and brought it back, just like they did for the goal. The absolutely the exact same thing they did for the goal. But in this case, we did not go for that and lost the ball by sending it for, for trying to force it, but we didn't need to, okay? Please don't hesitate to interrupt any moment, guys, okay? All right, so I said the six, okay? It's a, you could look at it as a center midfield, defensive midfielder. 
but the six plays it to the center back for McLean. Why was this an intelligent pass? It's a very basic question. Don't overthink it. Then the, when the six receives the ball again, she's in acres of space in the middle. Why? Why is there so much space for her in the middle? How does this happen? And later in the video towards the end, the striker was aggressive and she got a shot off. What else could have been done offensively in that scenario? All right, so first off, I want you to look at the first two questions. The six receiving the, giving the ball to the center back. Why is that an intelligent pass? And then when she gets it back, how is, in she, how is she in that much space? Okay. There, that first pass right there. Why is that an intelligent pass? And then, boom, how does she have that much space in the middle? Breaks a, breaks a line with that pass there. Striker, extremely aggressive, takes her on, confident, well done. And takes a few more touches, gets a shot off, but it's blocked, and that shot is blocked as well. And, oh, Wilmington gets the ball and struggles to clear it. Just had to put that last shot in the, off the post. It was brilliantly done. Okay. There you go. All right. That was a long one. That's all right. Okay. So, why is a pass from the six to the center back an intelligent pass? I'll give you the answer on this one if we, if we struggle. Right. So I'm sorry, go ahead. The other side. One more time. It moves the ball away from like away from pressure and so that they could reset it. That's one answer, correct. Absolutely. Okay. Got them away from the got the ball away from the density. I have there at least one more answer we're looking for here. At the most basic, at the most basic, think of her body shape. Think of the Back sixes the body shape. Backspace yes? in the ball. Backspace in the ball. Okay, can you explain that for us? Well, yeah, she's uh from the looks of it, it looks like she's under pressure, so it's not really safe to return under pressure. So okay. playing the simple option, playing the center back and or goalkeeper uh, would be the smart pass. Then after the pass is made, create separation space for for yourself or what the six did to receive the, the returning pass, to split the defense, and then we're getting to it. Absolutely. You hear that guy? Absolutely it. Okay, so – one, got the ball out of the density, but two, was only able to get the ball out of density because she played the way she was facing. She made the intelligent pass. Her teammate made herself available, and she played it to her. And then after playing that pass, she said, I'm going to make sure I'm open. But what was really intelligent about her in this case was that she didn't move so much. She let the game move around her, and she found herself uh, open because, as we see, the center backs got wide, the wing backs got wide, the other midfielder got wide. And so with them getting wide, Wilmington also got wide, and that created and left space in the middle for the six. Okay, so that was the first two questions there. Good on you guys for that. All right, and then, yes, sorry? It's, uh, it's Eleanor. Coach Melton, I just want to say, I'm just kind of like calling it out for the players, some of whom may have been here from week one and may not have. This is the same decision that we saw a Spanish international player make. So the tactics at the highest level do translate to youth players. This, you know, young Absolutely. lady just did the exact same decision as uh, Iniesta did in a World Cup final. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know I've quoted this, I said this quote a few times, but you did just remind, remind me, speaking of Spain, Xavier Hernandez is one of the best center midfielders ever. He, he said that if he doesn't check over his shoulder and receiving the ball, he always passes it back to where the ball came from saying if he doesn't have information of what is around him, he always passes it back. One of the best to ever do it is saying, I play simple when I can. Why shouldn't we? Especially in the defensive third, mid to defensive third. Excellent decision there. Even if it seems so simple. I had another coach, I think it was Coach Marcelo, that said the hardest pass is a simple pass because we got to force ourselves to do that pass. That was a very intelligent pass. Now, we're going to Continue the video, and we're going to watch as a striker gets the ball, dribbles it towards the penalty area. And before her first shot, before the shot is blocked off, there is a, maybe a few other decisions we could make, and I want you guys to uh, let us know and help us find out what could have been the decisions we can make. Okay? We'll watch that again. 
So as we said there, simple paths. Make it there. So as well to hold off. It was very well to hold off the defender. And in this area here, could we have done something else? All right, I'm gonna finish watching it there. And we're gonna stop there. Okay. So as she bears down on the penalty area, besides trying to go it alone in this particular case to go for the shot, what is another decision that could have been made? Use the width. There's not just one right answer. Sorry? Utilize the width. Yes. Wing back. Yes. Absolutely. All right, guys. Oh, Sasha, did you want to say something? Okay. All right. So utilizing the width. All right. I would have I would have said on the left wing back. Oh, oh, left wing back who's going up on the left. We also had another one on the right who was decently marked by the by the Wilmington defender. But in this case, it was a bit much to go 1v2, 1v3 to try to get it past there, especially when you brought so many defenders onto you, that means there's space somewhere else. And there was even the little uh, dropping pass to the player behind her as well, who then could have gone wide or for a shot herself, okay? So what we always want to remember is that to get from point A to point D, it doesn't have to be me doing all the running. I can pass it to player B, who can pass it to player C, who can pass it to player D. There's always more than one way to get to one place. Okay. All right. You don't want to let me say that because it's not work. One more time. All right. All right. So this is we just discussed this about two slides ago, so we could get through it fairly quickly, but we tried to progress down the left flank, but could not get through. What did we do instead? Okay, so plane has the ball, try to progress on the left side of the field, didn't work. What did we do? Okay, plane has the ball here. So we're gonna do that one more time. All right. Start that again. So they recover the ball, plays intelligence back. Left wing back checks in, passes it back to the left center back who comes to the middle, and then we we swing it. So what do we call this? What we did here. Okay, right wing back getting there as well. And the little foul at the end. Very well sold as well, the foul, I must say. <laughs> okay, so the ball was on the left. We the Wilmington blocked it off very well, could not progress. So what did McLean do? in this scenario, what did we do? And why were we able to? Think of what we've discussed so far. The answers are there. Coach, how many of your O3 boys white uh, is on this? Oof, I would have to go and check. Not many. But no, a few. They should certainly know the answers because we talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I will. What can I do? All right. I'll just I'll just talk about what I see, and you guys can can disagree or agree. Okay. So balls on the left side. All right. I'm gonna play this again. Balls on the left side play it back look at how we're getting wide already before the ball is received all right we're not going to see the right wing back making the run until too late but we do it there and as that middle center back gets the ball the issue the reason it was behind her is because just before she takes a step forward and take instead of taking a step back to give her more space but nonetheless we get the ball we move it to the middle move it to the right and you can call it what you will i say reset some say reset, some say, well, we also swung the ball over from the left to the right. But that's what the uh, white team did there and the McLean team did there. All right, they reset possession. They changed point of attack. They changed their point of attack, okay? Even if it, they weren't necessarily attacking, they had possession. And our goal in soccer is to attack. So they changed their point of attack from the left to the right, okay? So... This is a, both a, set, a, a way of resetting the play and also changing the set of the, the point of attack. All right. 
next one up. Don't worry, guys, we don't have too many slides today. All right, so as we watch this, this one is fascinating to me. This one, I really need to stress you guys, do not look at the ball, look at the players around the ball. Honestly, the, the movement here is so, so intelligent. It's, it's brilliant, really. We recover the ball and begin to build play. Which movements are essential to this when the player recovers the ball? So when McLean recovers the ball, she's just about to recover the ball. When we recover the ball, what do you see and what does that result in? Okay. Just that play there. Okay, one more time before I say anything. One more time. She recovers it there. Now what do we see? Everybody starts forming triangles. All right. One more time. Everybody starts forming triangles. Starts forming triangles. Very good. Now I want, I want us to go a little bit more specifically. Also, triangle is maybe the golden shape of soccer. Very good, but I want us to go more specifically. Where do they form the triangles and how do they form the triangles, okay? So now that we've gotten a clue to the answer, or really the answer, I'm, we're going to watch the video again and we're going to keep the triangle in mind as we watch it, okay? Okay, all right. And remember at the beginning, I said, don't just pay attention to the run they make, but to the timing of the run, when they start the run. Okay, so we saw triangles. Now, what, what exactly allowed them to have her have about 15 seconds on the ball at, at the end of this? At the end of it, she had all the time in the world to pick a pass, which is what you want in a game. You want time and space. How was that created? They created triangles, but how? How, how, how? Okay. By people uh, dropping I would say in. they were all moving. Let's go ahead, coach. So I would say they were all moving to create like a passing lane, like a play space where they can get the ball and get a lot of pressure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Who else wanted to, uh, wanted to make a comment? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Go ahead. No? Okay. All right. So they created space, all right? And we cannot ex quite see the numbers of the players, all right? So we're just gonna try to, I'm just gonna try to dictate to you what I see, can't exactly see the numbers, all right? So we have here, all right. So center back gets the ball. First one is getting wide to create space there. 15 is coming into the middle. And then we have another player checking in. All right, so that's, the, that's three, that's three uh, movements right there. But, oh, there we go, all right, that's one. And then the left, uh, the right wing back number 12 gets all the way to the touchline, which drags the opposite, the blue number four wide with it as well. Okay, so one more time. All right. Two players getting wide, 12 and the right center back. Player coming into the middle and another one checking in. And the center back who started the play moving forward to offer another solution behind number 15. Okay, four essential movements there. All right. So the right uh, center back getting wide, but the right wing back getting wide as well. That created space for number 15, but also for number 55 to come check into the middle. And then after the pass was made, they continue to make the movement. And if you watch, we're gonna watch it just one more time. Look at how it's all synchronized and made at the same time, at the right timing, okay? One last time. And towards the end as well, I don't know the number, but the young lady with the ponytail in the middle, she also opens her body, next to the referee, she also opens her body being ready to receive the ball. So all of it was triggered. When you find in a game that you have so much space and you don't know how it happened, it's not just because you created space for yourself, which I'm sure you did, but also because your teammate made a run of about 10 yards just to create more space for you. She knew she wasn't going to receive it, but she made that run to create space for you because the striker said, let me go and push up so I can pin the center backs. That way my number 10 has more time on the ball. All of that is created by multiple movements. You had four movements right there that allowed one player to have time on the ball. 
all about consequences and movements, okay? And not to mention the fact that the goalie's there as well and the middle center back is there as well, offering, uh, sorry, the left center back is there as well, offering another option, making it as wide as possible, okay? So that is what we mean when we say, look at the people who don't have the ball when we talk about timing of the runs. Because if any of those runs were too late, they would have been not useful and they would have put our ball player in danger. The person on the ball would have been in danger, in jeopardy. Okay, next one up. Okay, so what is so brilliant about the play here? When were the runs timed? First question, very vague, gives you time to figure out what you wanna see and then give you a bit of a hint with the second question. What's so good about this play and when were the runs timed? Okay, there we go and let's watch. We're gonna have a little quick discussion after this. Recovery, boom. One more time. Okay, recover possession here. There. Last time before we talk. Possession here. And there you go. And also pay very close attention as to where the ball went. So what did we see? Anyone can, can make a comment, guys. Anyone. What did we see? Girls, feel free to speak up. That's why you're invited. Uh, Coach, I saw that they transitioned from defense to offense really well. Yes. Now, why was it such a good transition? The center midfielder was able to turn her body and play upfield. Well done. Yes, she was able to play upfield. All right. Okay. Now, really what good helped? What, yes? Really good positioning and runs. Excellent. That's where we're going. Now, could we be more specific? Could I know we can't really see the number of the players, and we'll try to see if we can find a solution next time. But what? who's positioning? Who's timed runs? Any ideas, guys? Watch it one more time. Don't discuss again. I think it's number 11. Recovery is there. Look at that. Boom. Boom. And, the, and just for uh, give a big clue, we're going to discuss about that final ball, that through ball. I know my boys, we discussed it very briefly before, um, before we stopped practice, but hopefully you guys will remember the answer as to why that's so essential. Okay. So. Any ideas now? We said positioning, which is correct, and we said timing of the runs. Great transition led to that. What's so good about the positioning? Who's positioning? Let me stop any time here. Okay. One more time. All right, I'll give you guys, I'll, I'll help you out a little bit here. Okay. All right. So. I want you guys to see when the person who makes the final pass, all right, that through ball, when does she start her run, okay? When does she start her run to receive the ball? Before she even gets the ball, when does she start her run before receiving it, okay? So we're gonna look at the, the young lady in the middle who's gonna move toward in the direction of the referee, okay? Now. All right, now, okay, you said now, all right. So was it, when was it? When did she start the run, more specific? Um, I guess when she saw the pass going to, I don't know really how to explain the, the positioning, like the one with the ponytail is like in the air, I guess, I don't know. Right. Yeah. Okay, so when that person was about to receive the ball, the other midfielder started making the run is what I'm understanding. Yep. Absolutely. That is exactly the answer we were looking for. It will also lead us to the next answer for the next question. She started making the run before her teammate took that first, uh, before her teammate passed her the ball. So as her teammate started to turn, she was already making that run, anticipating that one, her teammate would be able to keep possession and two, would see her making that run, would know to make it there. She didn't wait for her teammate, get the ball, look up, 
take another touch, and then make a run, because by then it would have been too late. Okay, she started making that run, and by that same idea, the the let's say it's members of three four two one. So this might be the right sided uh, inside forward. She started making the run very early as well. Okay, let's watch it again. So she's already moving. Even in a split second, it's important in here. Number eleven, before her teammate takes that touch, she's already making the run because she read the game. And finally, I'll give you guys the answer for this one, okay? The brilliant thing about the pass was, what I always say about these types of passes when we're trying to hit the, the, the opposition or we're trying to really send a killer ball is you don't pass it to where your teammate is, you don't pass it to the space your teammate occupies, but you pass it to a different space. So if you see here, the player who makes that final ball, she passes it in between to Wilmington defender. She passes it into the lane. She passes it into that space, all right? She doesn't pass it directly to number 11. She passes it between the two defenders, immediately eliminating them with that pass. So watch it again. So watch when she starts making the run. Watch when number 11 starts making the run. And watch the transition of the entire team, okay? See if it's turning. already starts sprinting, which gives her time, all right? And also, excellent left-footed pass. Don't know if she's left-footed, but we say, we'll say she isn't, just to make it more impressive, okay? All right, so it's all about the timing of the run. What we saw there was the timing of the runs, all right, and especially in transition, all right? We're, soccer's last, what are we, 20, 20? The last t eight years has become more and more obsessed with transition, 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 transition from defense to offense, offense to defense. That is the big difference there. For those of you that love to watch teams, USA Women's, Liverpool, Manchester City, Dortmund, uh, Chelsea Women's, Arsenal Women's, transition, 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 transition. Okay, and that's what we saw there. They were immediately thinking about going on the attack, and they thought about it very early and very quickly. That's what made the difference. All right. Okay, what type of play is this? Why is it effective? Okay, I think I know. Yes, very good. So it's very, very simple, very, very basic. And we mentioned it very, very early on in the slideshow. Okay. And it's just a very small sample of what we're looking for. It's not the best we've had, but it is the maybe the most clear. All right. There we go. This is the very beginning. So watch that again right here. That's it. All right. What did we see? It's a small sample. We've discussed expanding <laughs> the field of play. Switching flanks, committing, uh, switching field, changing the point of attack, I should say. Uh, fixing or committing the defense to one side to play to the other and breaking lines collectively in the game. What was that first part of the game? Right there, it's the first few seconds, that's all it is. Possession. Oh, I'm sorry, one more time. Possession. Possession, absolutely. But we're gonna, I'm gonna point out exactly what moment we're talking about, make it easy for us. A little confusing, there we go. All right, so this, the next pass, what is it right here? That, that right there. What did she do there? Passes back to the person who passed it to her. Yes, and by doing that, who did she eliminate? Playing through the lines, right coach? Playing through the lines, absolutely. So if we can, so this is perfect what we, really want to see here is collective <laughs> collectively playing through the lines thank you coach absolutely okay so just a quick reminder because i didn't mention at the beginning just so a refresher for those that weren't here uh, last week playing collectively between the lines is anytime you have more than one player simply put anytime you have at least two players and you break a line like in this picture here or this picture there you are collectively breaking lines individually is when you dribble the ball. So simply put, let's give a basic example. 
so we're playing the three four two one in this game. So let's say that the right sided center back, we'll start at the bottom, the right sided center back receives possession and she has space in front of her and she dribbles it forward past the striker and the left midfielder. She goes past them and then she goes past the midfield line. She just broke a line because she dribbled through the midfield line. She dribbled through the midfield line. She did it by herself, even though she was only able to do it because the rest of the team got wide and created space. That is breaking lines individually. Breaking lines collectively is that same right-sided center back has the ball, sees her number 10 check into space, passes it. That the ball by itself breaks the midfield line and gets to the number 10. That is collective because more than one player. So this is the image of it. And the video we see here is literally a video of it. We put this video, the smallest thing, it's not the most interesting thing in the world, but I wanted to give you guys a perfect, perfect example of what it is, even if it is at its most basic and not the most um, uh, dangerous moment to do it. Although they advance through the middle, so it's a great thing. All right, so just one more time. It's the most simplest of things, all right? She does it by opening her body to go one way, says, nope, I'm going to come right back there. Boom. That's all it was. All it was. All right. Now, imagine doing that when the other team is not set, because Wilmington is already set. They're in their defensive shape, and yet you still eliminated players very quickly. Now, imagine doing that when you have possession after a few passes, or you have just recovered possession, and they're out of shape. That is so much more dangerous, okay? So what we just saw there was, boom playing forward collectively between opposition lines, all right? So that's exactly what we saw there. And that was just to give you a better example of what we're discussing. And if anything I say, guys, sounds a little blurry or strange, please do not hesitate, okay? So one more time on the breaking lines. It is a line is a defensive line. Let's say classic 4-4-2. The back four is a line. The midfield four is a line. And the two strikers is a line. Anytime you play through that, you're breaking that line, whether it's collectively or individually. And that's what they did there, okay? And since we discussed that, I have to talk about lanes and space one more time, all right? The lane is, Chris, would you like to give the lane and space a definition? You had it last week. No pressure. <laughs> um, a lane is in between the the line or the in between the lines and the space is the space in between the lines. <laughs> That's the will. Yes. We'll, we'll clean that up for you, but yes. All right. So the space is the distance between two lines. So going back to the classical four, four, two, the distance between the defensive back four and the midfield four is called space. All right. Or in another case, the distance between the midfield four and the striker two is called space. All right. Any, distance or any space between two lines is called a space. A lane is any distance between players of the same line. So going back to that 4 4 the, the, the distance between the left back and the left center back is a lane. The distance between the two center backs, left center back and right center back, is a lane. Anything like that is a lane. The distance between the two center midfielders is a lane. Okay, so that's what we mean there. And there you go, lane and space. And again, guys, some of you guys might know these by other terms. That's great. Please let me know because I want to learn as well. And I'm sure a few others would, would understand as well, okay? Moving forward. How was the transition from defense to offense positively handled? Why was there an open player? What were the options when the ball is received at the top of the box? All right, so a bit of a long one here. What was the transition? How was the transition from defense to offense positively handled? Sorry, we're focusing on offense here. Why was there an open girl? So how did they make that transition so effective? How is the player open? Well, there we cover the ball. Boom. There. Then go all the way to the end. There we go. All right, so we're going to look at the question again, and then we're going to watch the video again before we discuss. How was the transition from defense to offense positively handled? It's a very, very quick thing. And why was there an open player? Okay. And then we'll watch the latter part. 
We cover the ball here. Boom, that one's more open. Then we have another one open there. All right, so very simple answer, guys. Don't overthink it. I know you guys saw it. So how was the transition positively handled, all right? First part is the defensive. We all, the team moved together. That's one, okay? They're running back. They Why was the number 10? Players. Open? Yes, one more time. They found the open players. Absolutely. Now, I want you to, I think it's Preston, yes. I want you to tell me for, I'm just going to show the video one more time, then just give me the answer. For this player right there, that one who just received the ball, that one who just received the ball, how did she get open? Why was she open? Preston, please. Uh, she like play, She put herself in a good position so they could uh, allow a flu ball and a split to the defenders. Absolutely. The, with that split pass, because she got away from the defender, as coach reminded me last week, she made herself available. Okay, she made herself absolutely available. Created space. Got away from the midfielder. All right, and and the her partner made it very simple. She said, "I could dribble it up because I have space in front of me, but the ball is going to travel a lot quicker than I am. So let me pass it there." So that was number one. They recovered the ball in two v one. They played a very simple pass. What you see here, what McLean is consistently doing for the most part, is playing to the open person right away not taking more than two, three touches when they see the open player. But what's so important about that is that they see the open player. One, they're keeping their heads up, but their teammates are also making those movements. Didn't always happen throughout the game, but when it did, it was very, very effective. So one more time, we're gonna watch that. We'll keep our minds on that before we watch the whole video to watch, to answer the other question, okay? Recovery there. All right. One last thing. Um, also, the person, the number 10 who receives the ball that we talked about, her opposition defender was caught in between. Should I go press the other player or stay with this one? She decided to go press and then stop. She was caught absolutely in between and was immediately eliminated there. Okay. Right there, you have to make a decision. You have to go all the way. You, whether it's the right one or the wrong one, I'll, I'll tell the same way you tell a goalie, if you're going to come out, come all the way out. If you're going to stay, you stay. Whatever you do, make that decision. Make that decision to 100. You, we can live with mistakes as long as you do it, as, you, as long as you go all the way in. All right, because if you hesitate, that's the worst one. And she hesitated there. Now I'm going to indicate to you guys what moment exactly we're looking at when we say, what were the options when the ball is received at the top of the box, OK? So the striker has the ball. The blonde striker has the ball. Number 55, I believe, if I'm not lying. And I want us to see what other decisions she could have made. As soon as she receives the ball, what other decisions could she have made? All right. Watching this here. We cover the ball intelligently. We give it, and now they find the shape. And boom, she comes out of press and then stays. Ball here. And there we go. We progress. The ball is played now. What could we have done? Right there. In that moment there. What could we have done? What else could we have done? Oh, no. Jump back. Are you are you saying like when the ball is played to the to the nine, that we're yes, reversed? okay, yes, well, right then when that ball is played, she could have one touch, a low high low, and then we could have played a through ball to the to the third man run coming through the winger. It, there you go, absolutely. I want to go back to the high low because I don't think I've actually heard that one before. Could you explain the high low to me? I learned a new term today. <laughs> like a high-low pass. Eh? <laughs> um, you can say, like, for instance, uh, like a triangle. Think about right. the uh, center, the 10. Think about a 10 or maybe an 8 or a 6 playing the ball to a 10. And either mm -hmm. a uh, 11 or 7 making the, the delayed run or what we some people call the third man run into space. And then that opens up for either a shot or a cross. 
and that's a deal. Absolutely. All right, that's perfect. Thank you. Hi, Lo. I think I'm gonna. You know, if, if, if yes. you want to play that that one more, I would I would venture to say that the the wide player, instead of running down the center, it should have gone wider, and make that person make a decision. There you go. Okay. Are you talking about the the number nine, the striker who receives the ball? Yeah. The, okay. Yeah. Awesome. I don't know the number, but. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So on two points, we got two points to attack right there, guys. Absolutely where we wanted to go with that. So we're going to watch it again. I'm sorry, I can't jump right to it. Watch it again. Or can I? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So we saw. So if anyone followed, we're going to try this, guys. We're going to try that. Okay. So if we followed what Coach Clyde was saying, we're going to start with Coach Clyde because that moment came first. The number nine, the, the striker, before receiving the ball, she could have made another run. And all right, I, I'm not giving the answer on this one because I know my boys, I've stressed this for about 1,700 months. And I know the others that have been with us for the last few weeks, I've mentioned this type of run a few times. And everyone else here, you guys know you have to make these runs because I know your coaches are good and they've told you. What type of run could the number nine have made? Coach Clyde just gave you a huge hint if we were paying attention. What kind of run could she have made? All right, so right around, all right, there, okay? So we're just gonna watch it right there, okay? There, so yes, what did we see? What kind of run could she have made? She started in the middle. Where could she have gone? I'm sorry, one more time? To the line. To the line, okay. You mean the, the touch line, the opposite line? Yeah. Okay, very good. And what kind of run would that be called? Can we help? What kind of run is that? An overlap. Diagonal. I, I think we're looking a little bit more for, for diagonal run on this one. Um, okay, so the striker target is going to get right there. She just came into the picture there. As she's there, she stays in the middle because as a striker, the goal is in the middle. She wants to be in the middle to be close to the goal. Completely understandable. However, in this case here, because we discussed it so much, the, the defense is in the middle. That's where the goal is. They're going to put the density in the middle. They're going to stay in the middle. So instead of staying in the middle, what we would like her to do is make the run you said, absolutely, I believe it was Mari, make the run you said towards the line, a diagonal run. You really aim for the corner flag on this one. And as Coach Clyde said, make the defenders, actually multiple defenders, make a decision. Do I follow? Do I stay and protect the middle because that's where the goal is? But do I follow? and make sure she doesn't get the ball. If she does, she has someone on her. What do I do? She stayed in the middle, and thus the other number 10, sorry, the number 10 got into her space mm. or approached her space, which isn't an issue if we make the other decision here, which Coach Danny was telling us about, okay? So, so we're going to watch it again. I want you guys to pay attention to the run we could have made here, okay? Boom. The run is there. Don't make it. That's all right. Okay. Boom. Stay there right there before she even touches the ball. Before she touches the ball. What most of the team has been doing the, the, the entire game. Most of us have seen this being done the entire game. What could she have done, guys? She's receiving the ball back to goal. What's another option besides turning? And trying to take a 1v1. Playing the way she was facing. Playing the way she was facing. Yes, to the number 10, who then had what other options? Look at this picture right here. What are the possible options if this number 10 right here gets the ball? There are multiple. You can either receive, take a shot, because it looks like she's about 25 uh, yards outside, well, about five yards outside the 18. Or she could just play a simple one-touch, splitting the two defenders 
it looks like the center back and the left back on the only two uh where the the winger looks like she's making that run inside in that space to where she could be one on one v one with the goal absolutely 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 and if we were good if we were to be unnecessarily fancy she could hold on to it for half a second and allow for the left uh winger to continue to run and play it there if she's fast enough to beat and also the number nine as soon as she plays that one touch back to the number 10 she'll hopefully make a curling run around the defender to try to offer another option but so what we would have wanted to see first is all the way back here a diagonal run being made, but hey, it happens in a game. Something not done. We continue to play. She didn't make the diagonal run. That's all right. She got into a good position nonetheless. And as the ball is being played, as Coach Danny said, this is the perfect time to just lay it off right there and boom, take a touch, have a shot. It is grass, might be uh, bobbling a bit. Or if you're feeling confident, take it one touch. Or simply put, just slip it in. Slip it in to number let's say 34 who's making the run on the inside would have been onside as well okay and brilliant and also we could say that the striker could have again played the ball in there as well had a few t chances to play it in there okay so what we want when we tell you guys that you had an open player you had an option here what we just said earlier about going from a to d you don't have to be the one driving the car to get to a to d all right you can pass it off you can get the passenger seat so player b can do it and then we can get to, to D, or player C can do it, and then we can get to D, okay? We're A team, all right? Moving on. Okay, so there are multiple instances of brilliance throughout the play. Where? I don't remember myself. All right, so I gave you a few hints at the bottom. Dang. All right, so let's watch the play, all right? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, starting again. Recovery there, one pass, two pass, another pass. It's also something we just discussed. Stand again here. All right, one more time before we discuss. McLean recovers the ball right about here. That first pass right there. What do we call that? And that as well. And what do we call this? Okay. Could you enlarge the screen there for just a moment? Could have been made. Um, so, uh, one more time, sorry. Can you enlarge the screen for a minute? Just let me do that real quick. Where are we? All right, there we go. Okay. So right here, guys. And watch this again. One. There. All right. So we might want to see that again because it was a smaller screen. So we'll watch that one more time. Recovery is here. Boom. All right, so, and then we see the pass at the end. So, what do we see, guys? Lots of space. One of the things, yes, sorry. Uh, uh, the number 12 with the ball, uh, he has tons of space. Tons of space. So, how did number 12 get the ball, guys? What, what do we call that? We saw it at the very beginning in one of the images. We discussed that moment. What is that called? When you guys have the ball, yeah? Creating space, are we talking about 12th creating space? She created space creating for space. herself. Absolutely. When we have the ball in the middle or on the left and we play it over to the right, what do we call that exactly? What are we changing? Switch. Switch, of Switch of play, all right? We're changing the point of attack. Absolutely, all right, so we're changing the point of attack. So we're gonna watch that again. All right, so we're gonna watch that again. There's something before that that we have to discuss as well. We're gonna go straight to that moment of creating space at the right time and switching play, all right? So first off, 
Wilmington has the ball. McLean is more compact. Look at where number 12 is when the opposition has the ball, and then look at where she is when the opposition doesn't have the ball, okay? And how early she decides to make her run. Oh, right. All right. So do we see that? Do we see the changing the, the, the point of attack on one side and then it being switched to the other side? All right. That's number one. But before we even get to that, as soon as McLean recovers the ball, we see a few things. And one of those things is a term I just learned from Coach Danny. So you guys should know this. <laughs> okay. One more time, Coach. <laughs> Actually got that from Alan. <laughs> All right, guys. Boom. Excellent pass there. Boom. And this is just another version of what we could have seen from the striker in our previous slide. Okay. So the very first pass after the recovery, what is that called? I think it goes through a line there. What is that called? A bit on the nose. Right there. Boom. All right. Thanks to that, they were immediately behind the Wilmington midfield line and in front of the Wilmington back line. So they, they eliminated the line with that one pass there. And then very intelligently, the, I believe that's the number 10. Remember, they're playing the 3-4-2-1. All right. We'll discuss formations in a later video. The three, four, two, one. she plays it right to the person in front of her. So they find high, they play low, and then they say, all right, now the space isn't in the middle anymore or on the left, it's on the right because our number 12 is getting wide at the right time. So one more time, I want you to pay attention to that, okay? Towards the end, we're gonna see number 12 getting wide. All right, but before that, we recover the ball, we split a defensive line collectively, and the, uh, the number 10 just, Lays it off, one touch, and then we switch. So pay attention to all of that. And pay attention, when does the number 10 get open? When does number 12 get open? All of these things. Before they receive the ball, when do they do these things? Let's watch it again. Awesome. All right, one final thing, one final thing, one final thing. Number 12 has acres of space because she's getting wide, but also because of someone else. Who is that someone else? Okay. I'll give you guys, I'll, we'll skip right to that part right there. Okay. Right there. All right. So the defender is right now, she's, she's a little far from number 12, but she has an eye on her. She's occupying her. Why isn't she after this? Where does she go? Boom. Okay. Well, can we say that, guys? This player right there near the touch line, the player in blue near the, sorry, the halfway line, the player in blue near the halfway line. She's supposed to be defending number 12, our number 12. Why does she leave her? You have to make a decision between uh, the striker and or stay with. The, uh, the number 12, but it looks like the center backs for Wilmington gave our strikers acres of space to receive, so she had to step in order to try go. to shut, you know, to close down, which created more space for 12. Okay, there you go, guys. All right, so we talked about pinning last time, we didn't talk about it today. Striker didn't quite pin, but the fact that she would occupy that space there away from the Wilmington center back. So as coach Danny said, let, left her into space, forced the left back to say, do I stay on the right wing back or do I protect the middle, which is where the goal is, which is more dangerous. She decided to protect the middle and that left the number 12. If she was intelligent enough to go wide, which she was, she got wide, boom, and she had acres of space. So by just that, our striker occupying a certain space, she contributed to the fact that we had an opportunity to attack on goal. Just by making a certain movement all the way in the center circle, she contributed to us getting the ball into the offensive third near the penalty box. All right. 
So we saw transition. We saw the one-touch play becoming available, changing the point of attack, communication. I don't know if you could tell. A timing of runs and attacking space with and without the ball. Okay. All right. Coach Milton, before you um, jump in on this section, yes. I'm sorry, I realized belatedly I should have asked if you were going for an hour or 90 minutes. That's my mistake. Um, I'm going to have to depart and take about half the girls with me. They have their team chat at 515, um, but half may stay because theirs isn't until 6, uh, 615. All right. But again, no worries. thank you so much for this. This is awesome. And we'll definitely look out for the YouTube recording um, and come back to, the, to anything we didn't get to do as a group. Awesome. Can't wait. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Yes, and Milton, I know uh, if there are any 06 boys on here, 07s, I think they're doing the technical training with uh, with Jamil at uh, right. at five. But if they if they want to stay on, which I think they'll get really good information here, they're more than welcome to stay here and then transition to that. It's all their choice. Awesome. That is awesome, guys. So you're always more than welcome. We have about seven minutes left all right so we'll get to that awesome thanks again for all that are staying with us and showed up for the first hour was so so awesome thank you whose movement gives us thank you whose movement gives a striker who was clever in spring up space for herself a simple option what follows okay so our striker frees up space for herself but who helps her have a simple option all right so let's watch it slowly boom right there okay so it was very, very early. It was very, very early. I'm going to go back. All right. So the striker is the person who lays it off, not the person who switches it to the other side. Right there. All right. So we're going to go so we can close it off right here. All right. Right. Okay. So I'm going to make it a bigger screen, but I just want you guys to know what we're looking for. All right. So it's it, the movement happens right there. Okay, there, all right, go bigger screen so we can see it. All right, there, one more time. So basically, maybe another way to look at the question, the person who performs the switch, the, the, the switch to the right side of the field. How did she get open and when? Okay, the player in the middle, how did she get open? Right, watch this again. She's performing it right there. Boom. How did she get open? Don't worry, guys, if you help answer, we can be done quicker. It's up to you. <laughs> um, I have an answer. Yes, go ahead, Forrest. Um, I think that what she did to get open was she ran early and she created space for herself, so the the, the defenders couldn't get on her before her friend her teammate passed it to her. Absolutely, I loved what you said about she ran early. Okay, she went early to the to to the space she wanted and had that space. All right. And what she did was she was starting, she was in line with the striker and then she dropped, she dropped into that space. So she got away from the defender that was near her about five yards from her and created even more space for herself. So she dropped, she went backwards for, so her team could go forwards. Watch it again. It's all right, very much at the beginning, okay? Boom, look at that. Dropping into space and setting herself. She made herself available to her teammate and boom, the switch was on right, right, right away, okay? And what follows, the answer is change the point of attack, the switch, okay? Right here, we have a, this is a very quick one, all right? So the, the player does well to ride the challenge after a slightly poor first touch. And then the question is, where should the ball go? Right there. Does well enough, rides the challenge really well there. And where can we put the ball? All right, I believe she would have put the pass there if the, her last touch was uh, was tighter, a little cleaner. But where would the ball have gone? Watching it again. Fence it one way, 
Not very well defended. And boom. All right. Now, we didn't discuss this one as much, so I'll help you out here. She has one, two, three, four, five players moving towards her, and even a sixth one who stops backpedaling to move up. So what she did there, she fixed, she committed the Wilmington players onto her, and the space was thus created where? One on the right here, okay? And another on the left, we see that as well. So we're gonna keep an eye on that now. So watch all the players coming to her. That's another way of committing the opposition. It's not just by completing five passes in one area, but also dribbling at someone or dribbling into a dangerous space so that people come into that space where you are and leave another space open. Everyone coming in, there you go. Yes, coach. All right. And the ball could go right or could go left, honestly. That right would have been a simple option. All right, moving on so we can get you guys going. We do well initially to secure possession. At where and how does it break down? Okay. Possession is kept. All right, don't hesitate to talk during the video so we can pause it, all right? Watching it again. Goal kick, punt. Spread out here, there are a few options, there are a few. There are a few things that would have been a bit more complex first, but the simple one, the simple options here, or the simple issues, I should say. See the ball here, boom, she plays it back, which is good. Does well to faint out, all right? And now her partner who gave her the ball is backpedaling to give her space to come forward, which is good, which is good, is the right decision. Except later we see that if she had stayed where she was, they could have played a one, two, and then create a space somewhere else. But that's a little bit more complex. Um, an option here would be to play it immediately to the right midfielder if we have the confidence to do it in that situation. But otherwise, she makes a, a good decision as well by playing it out here to the right center back. I'm sorry, the right, uh, right wing back. She plays it out to the right center back. But the ball is a little bit slow, and then the touch is a little bit off. And even though the right wing back makes a good run, the pass is off. And even if the pass was on, the right wing back would have been immediately pressed and she would have been in a horribly difficult situation. All right. In that situation, if the ball does get to number 12, either has to play it in between the two blue players there for someone who's coming in or go all the way back to the goalie or the right or the center back. All right. So we're going to watch that again, keeping your eye on that. Possession here plays it back intelligently. There you go. Boom. The pass could have been on. Far side center back. She's able to do it on her left foot. She can play it to the right wing back, the midfielder there. But she doesn't, that's all right. Then here, boom. She could play it right away to the number 10 who passed it to her. And it could be a one-two. All right, sides not to, that's all right. The right sided center back drops into space. Well done. Ah, but the pass she makes is what? Outside of the foot instead of an inside of the foot. So the, back, the pass is a little bit uh, slow, doesn't have pace. So four, gives the defense time to get there. And McLean, we trap ourselves in the little corner. Okay, so I know a lot of players have heard me say stop with the outside of the foot passes, especially in those situations. All right, so we're gonna look at the first two passes and then why did it break down afterwards, okay? It's an excellent pass, so look at that. Oof. Oof. 
So we just discussed this with the striker. All right, we discussed what type of run she should have made last time. She started to make it here. Let me tell you, let me see if you guys saw what type of run we're talking about. So starting from the beginning, the first pass is excellent because she played the way she was facing, kept it simple. The second pass, same thing, but this time they broke a line and they went forward and they did it quickly. Gave you the answers there. Look at that, one touch, boom. Right there, when she receives that ball, look at what number nine is doing. She's already making a run. And it's not the best run we want, but it's in the general direction of where we want it to go. Diagonally. Yeah. But the number 10 doesn't play it to her there. All right. She started to make the run and then she stops. She started to go to the corner flag and then she drifts back to the middle. And that's the type of run you have to make, even if you're not going to receive it. You have to make that diagonal run because one, it drags the defender, or if it doesn't, you're by yourself in space. Okay. And if it does drag the defender, that leaves space for your teammate who has the ball or for someone else to make a run to where you were. Okay. So, more time. Look at this one. That the run is started there, doesn't take it, and it is broken down. Okay. So, pay very close attention to diagonal runs in the game. All right. Last time we were watching Spain Netherlands, David Villa's diagonal runs, Seth Fabregas's diagonal runs. That's what made them so dangerous. Triangle play, we also we already talked about it, and a third person run, as Coach Danny mentioned. Okay. Look at that, checks into space. And then, oh, brilliant. Almost too easy, guys. All right. From the kickoff, let's, number 10 gets high to create space. Right wing back gets wide to create space. Striker gets wider. And the number 10 performs a bit of an overlap to continue with the ball. So that's what we saw. It was a triangle play that we mentioned earlier. The third person run that we mentioned earlier as well. It's hard to see maybe from the distance, but it was incredibly, incredibly effective. And from the kickoff, they were able to once again get into the offensive third fairly quickly and easily to create a potential opportunity. All right. One last time. I just have to show one more time. Look at how high the, the team gets first, the white players get first, and how wide we get. And then look at that. Before she her teammate even receives the ball, she makes the run. So player A has the ball. Player C starts to make the run as player B is getting the ball coming to her. So as player A plays the ball to player B, player C is already making the run. Timing, timing, timing. All right, last two slides, last two slides. How is number three able to complete a line breaking pass? So number three on the back of her jersey, okay? okay. We recover the ball here. Intelligent plays it wide. And look at this. It breaks a line, all right? What I want you guys to pay attention is to number 15, where she goes and watch what the defense does, and that allows number three to play that pass, all right? So receive the ball here. Play it wide. And look at where this player goes. And the defense is split, and the pass comes in, and the striker checks in as well. Plays the way she faces. Touch was just a bit off but the width allowed us to play forward. So when you break a line, you automatically need width. You automatically need width, all right? So if you guys, we're doing this, notice how there is width every single time. There's space between the two defenders and space between the two lines. You need that. And for our last, last, last one, uh, I enjoyed this video quite a bit. We go from side to side here. What movement do we see that permits this? And pay attention as well. I said, we'll just see. Let's watch it. We win the throw in. She drops back to give her space. She stays wide to receive it. There you go. What do we do? We reset. And we go to the other side and go for a very ambitious pass. What I want you to pay attention for on the next one is uh, 
the girl with the ponytail in the center circle. We don't see her at the beginning, but we see her in the middle. What is she doing? She's directing uh, traffic. She's communicating. She's pointing. She's talking. She's yelling. Pay very close attention to things like that as well, okay? So blue lets the ball bounce, and so they lose it. Don't let the ball bounce. Plays back. Under pressure, but not feeling the pressure. There you go. And look at look at her pointing at the players. Look at her. Go here. Go there. Always communicating. <laughs> a midfielder, especially in the middle, needs to do that. I say goalkeeper, center back, center midfielder, strikers. Playing through that spine, you need to communicate a lot. But then again, so does everyone. All right. So last time we watched the video, pay attention. Number 15, 55, and number three. What do they do? And the center backs, what do they do? So there you go. Center back's dropping. Passes it back here. 15. Where did she go? She started in the middle. She went wide. Number 55 checks into space, even though she didn't receive the ball. Our striker, she checked into space, even though she didn't receive the ball. And that was very, very important. Okay. And boom. There we go, guys. All right, guys. So I know we threw a lot of different things at you. <laughs> it might have been hard to keep everything going there, but this will be on YouTube. Um, you can, thus when you go to YouTube, you can click on it and fast forward and go back to everything you want to see. But basically the grand scheme of things, the things we covered, um, can, I, I want you guys to tell me two things we covered today. Just two things. If I was, if I did a good job, we'll know. Cool. I haven't heard from you today. Oh, hi, low Thomas. There you go. There you see it's sticking coach Danny. It's sticking. Hi, low. All right. <laughs> So we discussed the high-low, all right? Playing the ball high and then immediately playing it low. Um, so finding depth with our pass and then finding the support player immediately with our second pass, all right? So it's basically one player being high, one player being slightly lower than that player, and boom, boom, basically forming a triangle. All right, excellent. Thank you for that one, Thomas. Next up, what do we have? Spacing. Spacing. Can you develop? Ah, you muted yourself too quickly. Can you develop just a little bit more? Like, one more, one more phrase. like the lines and like how to go into space and dragging defenders out. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. All right, we saw that that is important in, in being able to progress when we get as wide as possible. When we build from the back, we get as wide as possible. Boom, and then we can progress forward. That creates space for our midfielders and our strikers who are in the middle, our center backs as well. But also when we want to break a line, all right? If we want to get the ball from... Let's be extremely ambitious. From our center back to our striker, but on the ground, all right, playing it on the ground, that means our full backs need to be wide, or our wing backs, our wide midfielders need to be a little bit wider so that the defense can get wide and we, they can create that space. All right. Speaking of space, we also discussed lanes and space. I know we're getting a bit long, so I'll give you the definition one more time. Remember, space is the distance between two lines so it's the distance between defensive line and midfield line and lane is the distance between players of the same line so let's say a left-sided midfielder and a right-sided midfielder this the distance between them is called a lane and as players we always want to be in the lanes and in the spaces we want to pass the ball through the lane and we want to receive in the space so next time you see that for those players there you want to see where can i where when coach tells me to be open am i getting wide or am i going into the space that's basically what you need to look for when you don't know how to get open, ask yourself if you're wide or if you're getting into space. That's a small basic reference that will help you out a lot. Okay. And yeah. All right. I know we got to 90 minutes there, so I won't go any longer on the reviews. But uh, <laughs> guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for uh, contributing and being interactive. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Is, it, is there a reason why you didn't touch any of your technique, especially on the first video, uh, when the uh, but the portion of the player did not allow her to play the ball, like uh, an easy ball back to the goalkeeper or to play the ball back to the, the center back. Instead of forcing the could ball. You say, could you say the first part of the question one more time? Is there a question, is there, is there, a, is there a reason why you didn't touch the individual technique on the players, especially on the first video you said you, you talk about, like where the, where the player in the ball back to pressure? When she was in the ball, she was not like her body shape was was not like on the right moment when she can receive it and play the other center back or play the goalkeeper. Just a question. Right. Right. No. 
Well, today we were covering more of the global tactical parts of it. We got it very, very rarely into the actual body shape, uh, what uh, what correct foot to use, which foot to be on, what technique, what decision to make. We got very, very little into that, but that is something I think we could cover in one of the next videos of being very much more specific about when she made this decision, why was it a good one? Why was it not so good one? What about her body execution or positioning, her head turning, her feet, or all of these things? Why did that help her succeed in that? So very good on that one. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, guys? Uh, yes. Uh, are you doing this again next Thursday? <laughs> we are. I don't know what game yet. Um, if any coaches have want to do one of their games, please send it to me and we can do that. But um, yeah, we're doing this next Thursday. We don't know what game yet, but we'd love to have more people there. I can send oh, you, you I can send you a video of uh, of our 06, 06 boys. Awesome. Okay. Send it. Put send it out. Awesome, awesome. Man. sounds great. We really appreciate it. No, thank you guys. All right, you guys All have right, a good. I'm sure you you're tired of Zoom calls today. <laughs> thank, thank you, you very thank much, you. Milton. Thank you, Milton. Thank you guys. Have a good one. All right, buddy. Cheers. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, coach. Thank you, thank you coach. coach. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Leo, I knew your mic so you can hear us. And obviously, don't forget to scan. Hit the subscribe button.